thank you so much for joining us online this morning. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here at the chapel, and we want to take this time to welcome you to our online service. This is what we want you to do. We want you to check in. We want you to tell us where you're watching from and start interacting with people on the comment section. Talk to them. Tell them how you've missed them. Take a picture of yourself. Put it in the comments. And let's greet each other during this greeting check-in time. Hey, we've got an amazing service plan for you today that's going to start momentarily. But right now, let's check in and let's connect with each other. much for joining us online this morning. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here at the chapel, and we want to take this time to welcome you to our online service. This is what we want you to do. We want you to check in. We want you to tell us where you're watching from and start interacting with people on the comment section. Talk to them. Tell them how you've missed them. Take a picture of yourself. Put it in the comments, and let's greet each other during this greeting check-in time. Hey, We've got an amazing service plan for you today that's going to start momentarily, but right now, let's check in and let's connect with each other.
Welcome to the Chapel Jonesboro Online. I'm Pastor Lee, the executive pastor here, and I am so glad that you chose to join us in worship today. I know that God has something incredible in store for you and your family as you view this service today. So right now, Chapel Music is live in service. Let's jump on in there and get our worship on. Oh, my body died. 
a shout of praise in this place this morning. God is so good. Amen. You may be seated for just a moment. We want to welcome you here to the Chapel Jonesboro this morning. If it's your first time, just throw up a hand wave. Welcome all of our first timers. If it's your first time watching online, get in the comments and type in first time. Our connections team wants to reach out to you and welcome you. Thank you so much for choosing to join us online this morning as well. As we transfer into our ways to give, I want to remind you of all of the ways and options that you have to sow a seed into God's kingdom this morning, whether you're in-house or watching online. If you're watching online, you can use Cash App. That's money sign, the Chapel Jonesboro. Again, on Cash App, that's money sign, the Chapel Jonesboro. Or you can mail your tithes and offerings here to the church at 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30238. Again, that's 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30238. Our online givers are a big part of our church, and we thank you for your contributions and your support that you do weekly on a weekly basis. If you're in-house, you can give using Cash App. That seems to be very famous. You can also give by putting your tithes and offerings into the buckets as our ushers will come to you as we sing this next worship song, or you can give at the end of service. One of our Connections team members will be at the door with the giving kiosk. We accept all major forms of debit and credit as well. Like I say every week, there is no excuse not to give. There's no excuse not to sow and do our duty into God's kingdom. I want to read you a verse of scripture this morning from Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and 10, and it says this, whatever the activity in which you engage. Do it with all of your ability. Because there is no work, no planning, no learning, and no wisdom in the next world where you are going. What stuck out to me about this scripture is we have always heard, give it your best. Do your best. We hear it in school. I was always told by Pastor Donnie and Pastor Saber, son, just do your best. D's for doing fine. You just got to do your best. The same thing applies to spiritual principles in God's kingdom as well. For us to do our best. God has not called us to be mediocre Christians. He didn't call us to stand by and let our brother and sister take care of all of the duties in the church. God didn't bring you to this ministry to allow pastor and his pastoral staff to do all of the ministry. Can I tell you that when you give into God's kingdom, that is a form of ministering? Because every dime that you sow into God's kingdom gets planted out into the world to bring more people into his kingdom and make them believers. It says whatever the activity, as you stand up on your feet in this place this morning, whatever the activity in which you engage, do it with all of your ability. All of your ability. Some people may say, well, my, my ability may be different than someone else's. Can I tell you it's not? Everyone in here can reach in their pocket and pull something out and put it in a bucket. I don't see anybody out here without in here without arms. <laughs> I don't see anybody out here without a brain. What I see is I see people who are willing to do God's work. It says with all of your ability. So don't hold back anything today. Give it your best. Do it your best. Go above and beyond the 10% God has commanded you to do and watch him bless you in ways that you could never think, ask, or imagine. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, God, for bringing us in this place this morning. Just as your scripture says, Lord, we are going to give it with all of our ability in everything we do, whether it's our giving, whether it's our service, no matter what it is, we're going to do it to the best of our ability that you've placed inside of us. Lord, we speak over every giver, every sower, every tithe payer, every person who is going to plant a seed into your ministry today, Lord, as they release God what is yours back into your kingdom. I pray that you will release blessings upon blessings upon blessings into their life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
show us your glory. Come on, you can feel it in this place this morning. we fall down. We want to see you, Jesus. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Let every burning heart be only ground. Come on, sing it one more time. Show us your glory, Lord. Lord, we know we can't stand in the midst of your glory, God. We know that if you showed us everything that you are, Father, Lord, we wouldn't be able to handle it. But God, give us a glimpse today, Father. Give us a glimpse today, Lord. Lord, just uh, as Moses said, put us in the cleft of the rock, Father. Put us in a spot that as you pass by, God, that'll be enough, God. That'll be enough, Father. Show us enough today, not just to sustain us, God, but enough today, God. Lord, that we may bask in your presence, God. That we may give you honor, that we may give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him in this place this morning. going to pray. I feel this in my spirit this morning. There's a spirit of heaviness. One being God's glory in this place, but the other being the flesh. And the Lord told me to, to begin to rebuke that heaviness that you're carrying today. Rebuke that heartache that you're carrying today. Rebuke that fear that you're carrying today. Rebuke that thing that has come against you that you continue to carry. God said to tell you today that in His name you are set free. That He has brought His glory into this place. That He shall manifest His presence in your life today. That He shall break the yoke of bondage that has attached itself to you. Now, Father, we come before you this morning, God. Lord, and you knowing that you are a holy God, that you are a righteous God that you are a loving God Father that you're kind God that you're better to us than we are to you God and Lord I ask you this morning God as you have prepared the hearts of your people now Father use my spirit my lips God that I may be speaking Father as you have opened up the ears of your people that they will receive this word today not just here but online with us today our people that are at home today, Father, our people that are connected to the chapel today, that something in their lives will be broken off today, that God, a revelation will be brought unto their homes and to the houses that are represented here this morning. God, I thank you that we have people, Father, Lord, that are willing to step out beyond the fear of this world, God, and serve you in a way that brings glory unto your name. Now, God, take this service this morning. Use it for your glory in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Look around you, greet someone and tell them, uh, I feel free in this place today. Come on, I need to hear you in this house. Be a little louder for me today. Come on. Come on. I act like you just got some gossip from your neighbor and you can't die to tell somebody. Oh, you can't wait to die to tell somebody. Have you ever got any news in, in, that, that you just couldn't wait to tell somebody? Yeah. Oh, come on. You know, I heard it this week. Somebody called me and said, Pastor, you ain't going to believe it. I, I, I went to bed last night, and I had 45 cents to my name, but I woke up this morning, and my stimuli check was in the bank. <laughs> Can I get a witness in this house today? Oh, don't you feel the presence of the Lord every time they sign a check? <laughs> you heard it. I heard it from the front row. You don't give 10, you may not get it again. <laughs> I feel God in this house today. You have your Bibles, I want to take you somewhere today. Turn to the book of Luke chapter 24. And this is a very familiar scripture, usually used at Easter most of the time. But Luke chapter 24, and when you get there, say, tell me the rest. It's right behind me. I got you today, didn't I? Luke 24, verses 1 through 6. For those that uh, are having a little vision problem today, I'll give it to you again. Luke 24, verse 1 through 6. Verse 1 of Luke chapter 24. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, 
They and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared, but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why, the angel said to the ladies, you need to catch this, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember, somebody say remember. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee. My title today is remember what he said. Remember what he said, he being Jesus. You see, we, we have a thing in our lives that we always remember what somebody said to us that hurt us, don't we? You, you never forget what somebody spoke to you that got into your spirit and hurt you. And before we get started today, I want to, to look at somebody, and I want you to look at somebody and tell them I'm about to let go of what they spoke to me. I'm about to release my hurt feelings. I'm about to release the things that's been holding me back. I'm about to let go of some offenses that somebody has done to me. You see, if you're going to get this word today, you got to get yourself free before you can get this word. Is there anybody in here this morning you want to be loose from what's been holding you back? You want to be loose from what's been holding you down? You want to be loose from what's been getting into your mind at midnight? The only way to do it is stop remembering it. You see, the stone had been rolled back. Say roll back. Roll back. At Walmart, what do they got there? Roll back. Roll back. You go down that aisle, you say, oh, Lord, they got a sale over here. And they done rolled it back one penny. And they got you. They got you. The stone had been rolled back. The ladies stood in amazement. Two strangers standing outside sat on a rock and, and looked at them and said, well, why are you seeking the living among the dead? <laughs> Did you catch that? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Why do we seek the living among the dead? Oh, come on. That's the only thing I have against graveyards. Because let me tell you something, they're, they're not there. <laughs> they're not there. What was left of them is there. But, oh, their spirit is in heaven. Do you hear me this morning? So why do we see, oh, somebody said, well, I go down there and I decorate the, the <laughs> Pastor Bobby, I, I get tickled every time I hear. They have a family reunion decorating the tombstones. I'm not against that. But let me tell you something. Let me help you this morning. They don't see the flowers that you put on that grave. That's just for you. Have you ever done anything just for you? My baby said, I have. <laughs> she said, I have. So you see, let me tell you why we do that. It's because, let me tell you why they did that. Because religion always worships where they left him. Religion always expects him to remain where you left him. And they come down to the tomb and, and said, I will worship a dead Jesus. I will embalm him with frankincense and myrrh, the body of the dead. I will give to the dead Jesus. That there will be no miracles, but whatever it costs to get this together, I'm still going to go and give it because uh, I'm coming down to the tomb and, and it's still going to be like it always was. You see, that was the expectation of those ladies that day was to bring down what they had and to embalm the body. John chapter 8, verse 7, the Lord had me add this in. It said, so they continued asking him. He raised himself up and he said to them, who, who is, oh, help me, Jesus, who is without sin 
among you, let him throw a stone at her first. There's something I need you to catch, and there's several catches that you'll get from this scripture today. You see, when they got to the tomb, what was rolled away? The stone was rolled away, so the revelation of him not being there was in the process. And you see, uh, uh, but uh, could it just be that God will use the stone that is cast at you to catapult you to your destiny? Somebody need to hear that this morning. They're throwing rocks at you, but could it be the rocks that they're throwing at you? God's using them to move you into another dimension. You ain't never heard like it. What I'm going to give to you this morning, but God said you're focusing on what they did to you but he said don't focus on what they did to you he said focus on the way that you're going because what they did to you can't affect what he's doing in you Woo! Now I feel it in here this morning. I got some folks that knows what I'm talking about. We can't let someone else's stone disrupt what God is trying to do in our lives mm, can I get a witness in the front or the back this morning hmm and here when they walked up on the tomb, the stone had been rolled away. And like most women, when you, when you change on them, they get suspicious. Come on. Why are you sending me flowers today? Don't ever send them and you don't have no suspicion going on. Why are you bringing me a box of chocolate today? Let me tell you something, guys. Your wife's on a diet. Don't bring her no candy. <laughs> Debbie Cakes. Oh, man, I got witnesses all in this house this morning. Oh. Oh. You see, the stone had been rolled away, and they were suspicious. Not only were they suspicious, but there was two strange people there that they did not know. You see, don't bring no strange people around. Oh, I don't know these people. Uh, they, uh, you see, they were saying, I don't know these people. They weren't at the Last Supper. They weren't at Mary's house. I, I, I didn't see them around the boat when we were going on the boat. Who are these people that are around this tomb, that, that, that are around Jesus? Because, you see, they came looking for Jesus. Anybody ever come to you looking for Jesus and they got a stone? Mm. It feel good, don't it? And the women were suspicious because you you know you 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 always get suspicious around strange people, don't you? And the strangers, that is the angels, looked at them and said, "He's not here." They said, "He's not here." The angel said, "He's risen." He's ri Oh, somebody got what I'm saying. You see, the word risen begins to pop out me first because the word risen says that he got up. He ascended. He's not down where he used to be. He's not laying like he used to be. He's not dead anymore. He's up from where he's at. The angel said, oh, somebody better help me preach this morning. Said he's risen. That word just stuck out in my head. He's not here anymore. He's risen. And the word remember pops out to me as well. Because uh, we focus on the risen, but we don't focus on the remember. We shout this building down because he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. But we also need to remember what he said before he ascended. Do you hear me this morning? No, you see, how, how, how did they manage to forget what he said? The angel said, uh, remember what he said. He's not here. He's not where you left him. He's gone into another dimension. <laughs> oh, I'm talking about a shift here. I'm talking about a disruption here, uh, about a moving into the next dimension. And, and, and while I applaud the fact uh, uh, that you uh, would love him dead, you see it because that's what they expected was a dead Jesus. But I got to challenge you to understand that he's gone into the next dimension and, and they had forgotten what he said. But let's don't be hard on them now, you see, because that's some of our human nature as well. They had been through hell. And people can be hard on you not appreciating that you've been through hell. Oh, come on. You're going through hell. And they said, I told you so. Help me, church. Somebody better help me preach this morning. 
Oh, they, they done lost their car, and you said, I told you so. That number nine boyfriend they got done walked off on them. And I ain't talking about Chanel, Chanel number nine. Done walked off and left them, and all you can do is give them more hell for the hell that they're in right now. Hmm. <laughs> they had seen his body taken off the cross. His blood having congealed, they, uh, water pouring out of his wounds, uh, the, the red corpuscles and, uh, uh, had separated from the white corpuscles. I think I'm getting that right. And the water was oozing out of his wounds and no longer bleeding. He was dead. They had seen his stiff rigor mortis body having to be pulled away from the cross position and forced over top of his body, prepared his body for the grave. They had felt the warmth of Jesus' flesh turn cold as a refrigerator. And what they had seen made them forget about what they had heard. What's my title today? Remember what he said. I'm taking you somewhere this morning. I want you to know this morning, <laughs> has what you've seen made you forget about what he said? You see, we're in a war between senses, sight, and hearing. And here these ladies have walked down to the tomb uh, early in the morning. I would venture to say it was dark. The sun hadn't even come up yet. They had walked in the sight and the enlightenment of what they saw because what they saw convinced them, in fact, that he was dead. You see, they had just witnessed him dying on the cross. So they were walking up on something that they expected to be dead. You see, some of us are walking up on some things that we expect to be dead. It's all all over with. Throw some dirt on top of it. But I've come by to tell you this morning what you expect oh somebody this morning. What you think it is is not what God says it is. You see somebody said it's all over with but the crying but God says no. I've caught every tear that's fallen from your eyes in the palm of my hand and God told me to tell somebody this morning you're walking up on something that you think is dead but God said to look at somebody and tell them it ain't over with yeah, you're just remembering what you saw, but you need to remember what you heard. Oh, somebody here this morning, you need to remember what I said. You would have life and life more abundantly. Can I get a witness in this place this morning? Woo! Oh, we walk not by sight. Have you allowed what you have seen to make you walk in the light of what you have seen rather than what you have heard? You see, the Bible says faith doesn't come by sight. What does faith come by? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stop looking at what you see. What looking at? Stop looking at what you've seen. What? Stop focusing on what you've been stuck in. You see, it's a conflict of the evidences. You see, when you hear something on Sunday morning, but you see something on Monday, and what you see happening in your life contradicts what you heard on Sunday morning, and all of a sudden, uh, you react according to what you see rather than what you hear. <sighs> I'm getting somewhere, ain't I? I'm getting somewhere. Oh, what you see, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. What are you getting this morning? The Word of God. So which sense will win? What you see with your eyes or what you've heard? Oh, when you're a diabetic, uh, but you heard by his stripes were healed. What sense will win when you heard that the fruit of your body is blessed, but you see your children going stone cold crazy? Whose report will you believe? You see, right now in every person's life in this room, there's a fight that's going on. There's a fight that's going on. I mean a fight. I mean a boxing match. I, I mean a fight to death. I, I mean a war. I mean a conflict going on in every person's life in this room. But, but between what you see and what you heard. And I want to tell you this morning, in spite of conflict, the women went in. Oh, somebody need to hear that this morning. 
in spite of the, the situation of uh, what they had seen a couple of, uh, a day earlier and now they walk up to a tomb and, and the stone is rolled away and they're seeing uh, an opening in the stone. You see some of you are walking up to it but you're not willing to go into it. Oh, and them saying, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going in anyway. I don't understand it, but I'm going in anyway. I don't know what's going Some of y'all said that about coming to church this morning. I, I need to stay home in this warm bed, but God keeps pushing me to get up. I need to give up, but God said, no, you need to get up. I need to just let some stuff go. Oh, you ain't done nothing for me, Jesus, so I ain't getting up any longer. But you said, you know what? I'm going anyway. I'm not going to let the thing that's gotten in my head keep me in the bed. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? Somebody in this house today, you wanted to lay down and die, but guess what? You got up anyway. You said, I'm going to fight another day. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, but the love I have compels me to overcome the senses that's going on around me. These other ladies said, you know what? I feel like he's dead, but I love him anyway. I'm going to touch somebody and say, I'm going in anyway. Oh, come on. They say, well, that's not social distancing. Let me tell you something, people. Who will you be dictated by, the government or God? Oh, somebody better help me preach in this place this morning. Who's going to control your every thoughts and your ambitions, the government or God? I'm not anti-government, but I sure am glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to get with it this morning. Stop letting people get into your head. Oh, I dare you to say I'm going in. I'm going in for where God is getting ready to take you in 2021. You can't by, walk by sight. You got to walk by faith. You may say, I don't see my miracle right now, but God said, keep on walking. You may say, I don't see things changing in my life, but God said, remember what I said. Keep on walking. Oh, somebody here this morning, I'm speaking down into your spirit. You feel like you're defeated, but God said, keep on walking. Woo! Oh, you're going to have to go into some stuff not knowing how you're going to come out. But, oh, look at somebody and tell them, I'm going in. I'm going where I've never gone before. Oh, I'm going to see what I never saw before. I'm going to do what I've never done before. I can have what I've never had before mm. I'm going in oh why because for it's not by might nor by power but my, by my spirit saith the Lord. Oh, I'm going in. Though he slay me and keep raining in hell down upon me, though I go through all kind of trouble, I will still trust in the Lord. I'm going in. Oh, come on now, church. This is your season to step out of the familiar into the unfamiliar. We've been teaching and preaching on it for weeks. God told me to tell somebody this morning, it's time to go. You got to step from the natural. Oh, come on, baby. Help me with it this morning. You got to step from the natural to the supernatural and the only way you can step from this to that is to say you know what I don't see it yet but I am going to receive it I'm not feeling it yet but I'm about to feel it I don't have it yet but I'm about to have it you see that leaves the natural behind and it steps to the supernatural oh can I prophesy to you this morning Oh, this morning you'll go through a paradigm shift that will set you in a place of the unexpected, that God will appear to you in an unexpected way, that he will do unexpected things, that people who expect you to be where they left you, they're going to come back looking for you where they left you. But, oh, hallelujah, you're not going to be in the same place. They saw you depressed last week, but God says the glory of the Lord and the joy of the Lord is your strength today. Somebody better get who you. Oh, they thought that you couldn't move if they didn't move you. Oh, somebody here this morning. They thought you were the head and they were the neck. But let me tell you something this morning. God said to tell you, they ain't going to find you like they used to find you. 
Oh, they thought you couldn't progress if they weren't with you. But, oh, by the time they get there, well, you will not be where they expected you to be. God's going to move every obstacle that is standing in between you and what he's about to do. I dare you to praise him in this place this morning. Oh, help me preach it. So praise him again. Woo! Oh, I need you to catch this. Oh, what did I say? The stone was rolled away. Ain't that what I said? The stone was rolled away. Oh, somebody get with it. What do you see behind me? Stone rolled away. And let me tell you, when the stone got fully rolled away, who was sitting on top of that stone? Do you hear what I'm telling you? The angels were sitting on top of what used to hold Jesus inside. They were sitting on the rock. They were sitting on what the Romans used to hold him up. Oh, I, I feel God in this place this morning. Oh, hallelujah. I was in my office and the Lord said, take, take a little walk down to Psalm 118 and 22. He said, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Do you hear what I'm telling you this morning? The very stone that was rolled away, the stone that was placed in front of his grave. He said, all you see is a rock. He said, but I, hallelujah, you rejected that rock, but I'm the chief cornerstone. He said, though the gates of hell come against me, they shall not prevail. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They thought they had Jesus locked inside. There's somebody here this morning. They think they got you locked up, tied up, and messed up, but I've come by to tell you this morning, it's about time for you to sit on what's got you locked in inside. It's time for you to put your foot down on top of what's holding you back. Woo! Oh, not only did they roll it away, they made a chair out of it. What's the Bible say? I'll make your enemies your footstool. Hmm. What's that saying? What they're using against you, you're about to sit on top of it and say, what you gonna do now? You in my next poem, Pastor Jay. <laughs> there them angels were just chilling out. Anybody know what that means? Chilling out. You know, just laid back. I ain't gonna go in that song. I'm gonna let that go. And they look at Mary and they say, What's going on, Mary? What's up? Chill out, girl. Chill out. Calm down. Stop freaking out. You see, that's how some of us do. Things get going on in our life and we go stone cold crazy. I don't know what I'm We fall all to pieces. Oh, they said, he's not where you left him at. He's in a whole other dimension. He's risen. He, he, he's risen. Oh, someone, somebody this morning. He's risen. He is forward. Uh, remember is back. Risen is forward and remember is back. You see, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I don't think you caught why well, I'm preaching this morning in the house. What you don't understand, uh, uh, let me tell you what's going on. He, he had to, to be exalted above every name in the earth, under the earth, and above the earth. So wherever you get ready to use his name, let me tell you, there's not a dimension that his name won't work in. There's nothing coming out of hell that his name won't work in. His name has been exalted above every name that is in the earth, under the earth, above Above the earth, that the name of Jesus, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Oh, not just the demons you deal with now, but the ones under the earth, the ones in the earth. You see, there's not a chance in the world that you can use his name in a place where he does not have dominion. Oh, you us, come on, you letting other stuff take his place. You letting problems take his promise. <laughs> oh, you letting poor mouth take his provision. 
He went through all of that so he would have the power here, there, and everywhere so he could sit at the right hand of the majesty on high. Oh, hallelujah. Just like the angels sitting on top of that rock. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father of the majesty on high. And he's making intercession for you and I. Uh, but before you're going to get the revelation of where he is by what he said before and then had to go back, you got to remember something. Because it turned out just like he said it would. You see, if they had been listening to Jesus, they wouldn't have come down to the tomb that morning. He already told them he was going to be living. Before he was crucified, he already told them. He said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll rise it up again. He already told them. He said, no man takes my life. I lay it down, and if I lay it down, I'll pick it up again. And as Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth for three days. He said, you come to a tomb that I am not in here. He said, I, they, they didn't take my life. They thought they killed me on a cross. But all they did was empower me to go get the keys to hell, death, and the grave and come back. He said, anything you're going through... I'm there with you. Woo. He told them. He told them. Why had they not remembered what he said? Why do we forget what he said? There's a little deeper principle that we need to get this morning. I noticed how he prepped for what he had to go through before he went through it. He said, I'm going to go through something, but I'm coming out. He said, it might look bad for a minute, but I'm coming out. They, they, they think they're in control, but they're not in control. I'm coming out of this. He, he wasn't even in it yet. He was already telling them how it was going to turn out. He calls those things that are not as though they were. And not when everything was over, it just, oh, somebody, it turned out just like he said it was going to go. And you see, and the Lord said, the problem with my people is when they're in trouble, this is how they're in trouble. This is how they deal with being tr in trouble by saying, pray for me, child. I'm going through some stuff. I don't know how things are going to turn out. Oh, come on. All hell's breaking loose in my life. I'm going through such a bad time. I don't know how. I don't know if I'm going to make it out or not. This is a, 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 this is a big one. You don't know. Uh, Lord, it's a big one. It's killing me. That's how we pr go to people. Yeah. And you know what gets me? The very people that come to you for prayer won't pray for themselves. They want you to pray your promise into their problem. Pray for me. Pray that I'll be able to get up this morning. Let me tell you, your getting up is a decision you got to make on your own. I ain't coming to none of y'all's house and get you out of bed on a Sunday morning. Pray that the will of God will get me. God's will is for you to get up every morning. Oh, come on. Help me in this place this morning. Yes, Lord. How many people here are still on the bottle? And I'm not talking about the liquor bottle. Huh? How many this morning got up and got that formula and mixed it with that water and put it in that bottle and drank it on the way to church? You better not raise your hand. We'll get you delivered after service. But how many when we leave here today, if you're not vegan, is going to go somewhere and eat some meat or something? You see, the problem is, is we get stuck on the bottle and we never get to the meat. And that's why we remain in something asking somebody to pray for us when God said, I've already taught you how to pray. Oh, you see what it is. They don't understand the power of life and death is in their tongue. And the reason you've been in it so long is because of how you talk. <laughs> oh, I'm right there with it, Pastor Jalen. I'm with it this morning. You see, the, the, the children of Israel could have been out of the wilderness in a few days, but because of their mouth, they murmured and they complained. What should have been only a few days took them 40 years because they did not talk right. 
Mm. Mm. Look at somebody and say, how you talking? Oh, look at them again and say, I heard you yesterday, and I sure heard you this morning. Man, these altars are going to be full here in just a little bit, ain't they? Mm. The Lord said if you want to come out quicker, you got to change the way you talk. You got to start talking in the next dimension while you're still in the same predicament. Oh, what does the Bible say? The Bible said, let the poor say, I am rich. Let the weak say, I'm what? I am strong. And all, oh, come on. And all I know to do early is to be talking about what's happening next. But the Lord said, don't wait till you get there to start talking uh, in the next dimension. He, oh, he said to somebody this morning, he said, you got to start prophesying to the problem. Oh, I got some Holy Ghost. How many tongue-talking witnesses do I have here this morning? How many anointed men and women of God do I have in this building this morning that knows that you got to speak to the mountain and it shall be removed? But let me tell you, while you're speaking, God said, get a little shovel and start digging the gravel out of the way. Start digging the things out of the way. You see, because work without faith is dead. Yeah. Come on. <sighs> yeah. Woo! Oh. He said, if he's going to anoint you to prophesy, yes. I want you to speak to what God's about to do in your life. You see, you shall have, if, uh, let me just back up. So here, if you shall have whatever you say, it's going to turn out according to what you said. You got to get up, you got to stand up, and you got to say something. I don't think you heard what I said. You got to start speaking life. You got to start pre prosper. Speaking prosperity, you got to start speaking what God says that you can have. Oh, come on, somebody, this morning. You in a situation, I dare you to speak. You broke as a joke. I dare you to say, I am rich. Hallelujah. You weak in your body this morning. I dare you to say, I am healed and whole in Jesus' name. You've got some stuff going on in your life. The battle is bigger than what you're going through. You got to say, I got the victory in this thing. You got to... Woo! You may be walking in defeat, but you singing victory out of your lips. Let me tell you something. Sooner or later, you get faster than what you're walking, and you step into the next dimension. It's not what I said that's going to bring you out or keep you in. It's what you say that's going to determine what happened next. What really gets me here in this scripture and gets me with you guys today is he just gave them the keys to the kingdom. I just gave you the keys to the kingdom. When I told you you could have whatever you say, you should have took over this service. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, I, I started to dig some keys out this morning and tell you which locks they went to. But you see, that's all we want. We want a familiar key. <laughs> Are you with me now? We want a natural key. We want a key that we're, we've always done and always did it this way. And that's just the way that it is. Let me tell you something. There's churches all over America. If, any, if their pastor or any leadership in that church has heard from God, he's heard God tell them, it's time for you to change some of the keys that you've been using in your ministry. You see, this is a perfect opportunity for the body of Christ to pull a few weeds out that have been holding, oh, somebody better hear me this month, that have been holding people back. You see, God says, I have given you the keys. You sick this morning, he gave you the key to healing. You you're, you're bound up this morning. He gave you the keys that would loosen the shackles. Oh, I feel a merry, merry moment in this house. I'm about to dance. He said, Woo! He said, If you, I gave you the keys, you got to unlock what's holding your feet back. You in this house today, you feeling depressed. You got anxiety. You got all this stuff going on. He said, I gave you the key to freedom in this place today. You dealing with some stuff in your house. He said, I gave you the keys today that that stuff will turn around. Oh, oh. oh look at somebody and say, I'm about to unlock some stuff. <laughs> when you unlock it, what do you do? When you unlock your door at your house, what do you do? You need to remember what he said this morning. 
You go back to your house, your husband still laying there acting a fool. Your wife still laying. I ain't gonna, I'm going to say it. I said it about the husband. And she acting all crazy. What you going to do? Y'all know that commercial on the cops? What you going to do when they come for you? Nowadays, we throw our hands up in the air real quick and say, hold it, hold We don't know which one's good and which one's bad. But let me tell you something. We serve a God. Do I need to say it again? We serve a God. I ain't, oh, I ain't worried about what's happening in Washington. I ain't worried about what's happening in Georgia. I ain't worried about what's happening in California. I'm not worried about the COVID rates going high. Somebody need to hear me this morning. I'm not worried about going to get me a shot in the arm. So I, woo, you see all that thing's going to do is give somebody a really release of fear in their spirit. What we need is a move of the Holy Ghost. We need a move of God in this country and it has to start with us. It has to start with some key unlocking, tongue-talking, Holy Ghost filled people that are willing to step out and say, you've held us down too long. Woo! 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 Where you at this morning? Where you at this morning? What's got you locked up this morning? What's holding you back this morning? What's got a hold of you this morning? What's speaking to you this morning? What's a, what had you trapped last night? What did you fall prey to yesterday? What did you give into last night? Oh, come on. What did your children do yesterday? You got some of them out there and you say they ain't going to never change. God said as long as you say they ain't going to never change, they ain't going to never change. You got to start speaking. I see change in their life. Woo! 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 I hope you know I got up to preach this morning. Huh. But let me tell you what I really got up for this morning. I got up because yesterday's gone. Every funeral that I've done, I think I'm on a roll about six straight Saturdays now. God said, stop mourning. He said, I'm going to turn. <laughs> oh, he said, I'm going to turn your mourning into dancing. <laughs> Have I got some dancers here this morning? Sitting in that service yesterday, one of the few that I didn't have to preach. And they played a song on there. And it was, I want to see Jesus. So they carried him from mansion to mansion. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, he's not in a mansion in heaven. He's in the throne room of God Almighty. And he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Woo, do you hear me? If God be for you, who can be against you? Who is whatever you give credit to that is holding you down back or in a spot that you're in? Whose middle name is fear? Whose middle name is doubt? Whose middle name is sickness? Whose middle name is codependency? Whose middle name is addiction? Whose middle name is generational curse? Oh, I'm calling them this morning. There's an atmosphere of expectancy right now. The chapel has been the breeding ground lately. Paul, oh, do you hear me? Oh, I'm not talking about more babies being born. Some of these mothers said, don't even look at me. You're about to burst something in the spirit. <laughs> you thought 2020 had aborted it. But God said, I need you to carry it a little longer. <laughs> oh, I feel it now. He said, what I've placed in you, I need you to carry it a little bit longer. 
I need you to labor with it a little bit longer. I need you to spend some time with it a little bit longer. I need you to develop a relationship with what you're carrying because you're going from what was. He said, remember what I said. Stand to your feet. Mm. You feel what I feel in this place today? In your homes today. In your homes today. Online. Take your house back. Take your family back. Take your finances back. Somebody facing a, an obstacle this morning. And you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to get through it. God said, I want you to walk around it. You're standing in front of it. God said there's a way around it that you don't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> follow me. Oh, I make you fishermen of men. Follow me as I follow the Lord. You see, I found it interesting when he spoke to the disciples. He said, I want you to leave that job right there. What he was saying, he, said, he was saying, I want you to leave your means of income because I got something else for you. I want you to trust me. That was the hardest thing I ever heard God tell me to do. I guess it's been 10, 15 years now. We had the business in Palmetto. And we were doing over 300 police cars a month, Fulton County. When I say bank, I say bank. Some of y'all remember when I was youth pastor. You needed a car, we bought them a car. We didn't have, that was God's money. Their family needed something at home, we made sure they had it. They had a bill that needed to be paid. We didn't go to the church and ask the church for any money. We didn't even consult the senior pastor. We went and took care of business because that was God's money. But one day, the Lord said, I'm about to raise you up from where you're at. I had no clue. I was about to step into what I was going to step into. And as I stepped into it, he said, I want you to leave that behind. How many of you could leave $28,000 a month gross behind? <laughs> oh, you're like, really? Am I, am I lying up here today? <laughs> it was hard, wasn't it, baby? for her the way we live the way we spend the way we do I want you to leave it all behind I want you to give it to the person that's worked with you for a while I want you to set him up put it in his hands but take it out of yours because I got something for you to do I never asked God one time God uh, uh, what about my check I never asked God that never God said you're going to be okay the first few months, I was okay. Had a little reserve, you know what I mean? Had a little put back in the ceiling of the house. True story. But all of a sudden, that started dwindling on now. All of a sudden, the church we pastored needed money to pay the rent. And God said, write a check. <laughs> needed this and needed that. God said, you got it. Take care of it. Don't worry about it. I got you. And the next thing you know, I'm working for free. Two years. Two years. No check. Some of y'all remember this, don't you? No check. Two years. Some of us roll over and die for two weeks. Hmm. God, I trust you, God trust you God started selling off stuff what's a car what's a couple cars what's an engine what is it it's nothing sell it sell it sell it sell it clean it out let it go one by one I watch stuff leave her house sell it sell it sell it. And one day I woke up and I realized I had nothing else left to say. Nothing. Nothing. I 
I didn't say, God, I don't have nothing. I said, God, I trust you. I trust you, God. I don't understand this, God, but I trust you. This sermon today, when the Lord began to speak this to me, he said, you have focused so long on the stone and you focus so long on the emptiness inside that grave that you have missed me. You have missed me. There's some of us here today, we have focused on everything around us. We have focused on religion because this is the way our parents said it was going to be. Let me tell you, we're in a new day, church. We're in a new day. We're in a new generation. This church, we're in a growth spurt in the middle of a pandemic. How does that happen? How does it happen? And you say, well, it don't look like it this morning. We got about five shifts in this building. And if all five, including our online church, they are members. We're getting ready to take in some more members, by the way. They are members of this church. I consider them as family members of this church. And if we started counting them online from state to state to state, it's not about the number. It's about the body that God's enlarging. And let me tell you why he's enlarging it. Because we took our eyes off the stone. We took our eyes off the empty grave. We took our eyes off of what we can bring to Jesus. Oh, help me, Lord. Because that day they brought frankincense and myrrh. They brought precious oil. They were ready to take care of what was inside. I venture to say, just like them grave clothes, that were folded over and pressed just like they'd been at the cleaners laying up on that bed or rock or whatever it was they laid him on folded up nice and neat when they walked in I venture to say they left the oil right there they left the frankincense and myrrh right there they dropped it all off because none of that mattered to them they had all of a sudden remembered what Jesus said that he is alive forevermore and he is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I today. So I want to challenge you today. I'm going to pray with you at these altars today. But if you just want to come down here today and, and drop what you feel is precious. Because you see, some of you some of you are visiting the grave of your problems. Some of you are visiting your religion and saying it's not like it used to be. <laughs> Let me tell you something. He stayed there. It ain't like us going to an Akana Lodge. My baby, she tried to get them nice ones when we go somewhere. Make sure they got all it. I'm glad she does because she takes care of me. She takes care of our family. But God said, until you get your eyes off the hill, you'll never see me. Until you get your eyes off the problem, you'll never see the promise. Until you get your eyes off the situation, you'll never see the miracle in the middle of that situation. Until you lose your focus on what you're tied into and you're just that your, your mind is just stuck on it and that's all you can do. he say him whose mind is on me and him shall I keep in perfect peace oh. Oh, in other words when your thoughts are on me I'll keep you in the place that you need to be and you wonder today why am I strolling here and there prayer warriors you'll come down to this altar today I want to ask this if you got a need today in your home, I want you to just drop down where you're at right there. And I want you to say, Jesus, I'm not at the grave anymore. I'm at your feet. And I'm calling out to you. And if you're here this morning and you're dealing with some junk and you're saying, I don't know how I'm going to get through it, let me tell you how you get through it. You walk away from the grave. You say, that's dead to me. It, it doesn't belong anymore. That doesn't hold my promise. The grave, oh, let me tell you something. The grave don't hold your promise. It didn't hold Jesus. It don't hold your promise. 
He holds it. You need to get back to Him. Follow me as I follow the Lord. Who are you following this morning? You know, they have a saying that says, the blind leads the blind. They both fall in the ditch. Are you where you're at because you're following somebody that don't really know where they're going? Are you in what you're in because they're so inconsistent that they've made you become inconsistent? Huh. It's, uh, Pastor, I'm in deep debt trouble. God gave you money to pay your bills, but you went and bought a TV. God gave you money to pay your bills, but you decided you wanted to take a vacay. But when you got home, your lights was off. Or when you got up on Monday morning to go do whatever you're going to do, they done jacked your car. And I ain't talking about stole it. They hooked it and took it. God said, I gave you the money to take care of your situation. But you, I, I gave you the job. I spoke to that person to hire you. But you were unfaithful. You weren't committed as you should have been. And now you're unemployed. Oh, you're not liking this. You're not liking this, are you? I'm going to tell you something. Y'all may not know this about me. I don't like to work. That's not my most favorite thing on my list. Trust me. Especially since I... I I'm sorry, Lynn. I know you're older than me. Lynn Shackle, she's looking around here. But when you get just a little tad older and you could used to could push a car and now you got to use a Tahoe to push a car because you, you just can't move it no more. It don't mean you're getting weak. It means you're getting worn. But the word of the Lord, because there's somebody here today, you're weary. And he says, all you who are weary, <sighs> let me just put it PDism. Burdened, heavy laden, troubled, fighting, going through stuff. He said, come unto me, and I'm going to give you some rest today. Come unto me. He said, take my yoke, take what I'm carrying. <laughs> he said, because let me tell you something, Jesus don't tote problems around on his back. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You, you need to catch that this morning. When God set him free, when he took every sin and every iniquity and everything that uh, we could ever do in our lives, he took it to the cross, he hung it up, and he said it's finished. So right now, I usually say bow your heads, but no, I'm going to say, if you got it going on and it's not good in your life, get to this altar. You got it at your house today, cry out to the Lord. Call out to him today. He hears your plea. He hears your cry. But you got to take the first step today. You want things in your life to be different. You got to be different today. You got to make a decision today that says, you know what? I'm not dealing with this any longer. Hey, we hope you had as just as good of a time in service today as we did. God really showed up and showed out. If you have been blessed by today's message, don't forget to give using the giving methods that we talked about earlier in service. And also share this with your friends. We love you and we hope you have a blessed day.